All right, we've got the Garnet and the Gold going at it in Tallahassee on Saturday. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, catching up with James Coleman from Gridiron Now. You can also catch his podcast, Sports Den Live. James, how you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. Just getting prepared to go over and check out the spring game. Yeah, you Never kind of surprised me there. That's saying that uh, you're headed right out, ready to get to it uh, a couple of days in advance. Yeah, they're going to do a big alumni event tomorrow from former players. Um, Willie Tiger's done a really good job of trying to bring everybody back. I know a lot of guys have gone and checked out practice. Myself, I've checked out too. Um, Danny Cannell, Jameis Winston, um, Charlie Ward, all the greats. But it's supposed to be about 350 former players um, that are coming back as well as family. So it'll be like going to a big football family reunion. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm sure you guys uh, could uh... – talk football, talk old stories forever. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it gets. I mean, we'll all probably share variations of the same story that just happened in different eras or, you know, we'll just talk about different conquests. And I'm a fan. So I was a, before I played, I was a, um, I mean, that's why I always try to tell people the perspective I try to give when I write is from a fan, from a player, and then now for media. So I'm giving, trying to give three perspectives. So like I understand why people are upset at certain plays, but I try to explain it from the player's perspective. But I also understand as a media member now that we have a job to do. So that's really unique right there because uh, many are fans and there's the emotion, the engagement, the, the all-out loyalty. But then you turn into a player and uh, obviously that's, uh, there's very few that reach that level that you have. And that perspective being right in the field and knowing what's going on exactly. And then the media obviously has to be a little bit more critical with a little bit more critical eye and a little bit more of a journalistic take to things. So you've got everything covered, James. So that's one of the reasons we 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 chase you down for these. So, uh, you know, before we talk about this current team, this is what interests me about bringing you on here is that, uh, you know, what was your take on the spring game? I'm sure it differed based on where you felt you were in the pecking order on the depth chart, whether this is just, hey, I need some reps, I need some live action. Obviously, there are scrimmages going on. The, the spring game gets all this attention because people are actually in the stands, but you guys obviously have live scrimmages uh, during the spring sessions that are just as intense. And, uh, but then you've got other times where obviously there's a ton of guys out there playing for the job, trying to, to, to get some playing time. So there's different perspectives and different approaches, I would think. Yeah. All right. So it's different now because you have a brand new coach. Um, I never experienced that, but your coach was around for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And I was (laughs) lucky, but, um, I've, I've covered and seen it enough or heard it from enough people enough times. But traditionally, you know, we, your first spring is really exciting. You're really actually trying to get developed. The spring game is is um, is kindergarten graduation. It means absolutely nothing. Like, it's just fun to be around, and everybody gets a certificate. And it's really more so for fans and for boosters. and Or maybe kindergarten graduation is the worst way to put it. It's a recital. Like, All the hard work and all the stuff has been done. Your position isn't necessarily earned in the spring game. Your position has been earned in the previous weeks. But this is for everybody else and, you know, for bragging rights. And now it's becoming a essentially a recruiting tool um, to bring new guys in on unofficial visits as the unofficial visit has become damn near an official visit in the eyes of um, most most um, fans and recruits. But when I played, it was uh, my freshman year was the big year. Um, I played in special teams and sparingly my, my freshman year. So the spring for my freshman and sophomore year is really when I came in and I took the position. And then I started um, from my sophomore year all the way to my senior year. And I split time with another fullback, B.J. Dean. But my coach saw what I could do. My position, you could either hit people or you couldn't. Um, you were either afraid or you weren't, and then you know, but in running the ball. But a lot of the times, you know, you get a little injury, they shut you down, not because it's a big deal. It's just because they already know what you can do. So like Nuni, Nuni, uh, Nyquan Murray, like his injury was a tear, and people hear tear and think, and it's not the same as an ACL. ACL tear is scary. 
that's the one or or the patella tear like um DeAndre Francois had. But like little minor, like people tear the MCLs every day. You could technically put a brace on it and be decent. But if it was the season, they would probably figure out a way to make him play. But because it's the spring, no need to risk it. They know what you could do. Um so it's really just cleaning up technique and learning systems and philosophy. So um practice is where a majority of the work really gets done. James, when you look at the positional units, based on your experience, so you got the linebackers, the defensive line, the offensive line, the wide receivers, do they, those groups tend to be really close in terms of having friendships, but at the same time, you guys are competing. So do you tend to have build relationships? Let's say you're a fullback with the offensive lineman more so than the guys that you're competing against. What happens is, is one, and then Tiger does it a little bit different. When I was at Florida State, we had about 130 people on the roster. 85 scholarship, and then you're about 50-some mile walk-offs. Maybe less. I don't know. Uh, 120 to 130, whatever. Um, it's impossible to have close relationships with that many people every year. And with, with 25 to, to 40 leaving every year in some capacity. So you tend to be really close to those who are in your recruiting class because you 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 went on your official visits together. You went on your um, you know, you guys knew each other through camps and different things like that. And your segment; those are the people you're around. Your segment way more than you're around your other team, your your other teammates. So you're learning together. You're doing all these other different things together. So that's typically what happens. Um, so yeah, so kind of to answer your question. Like I know all the running backs, and then you know your offensive linemen because you're doing inside drill with them that obviously the wide receivers a little bit because you know them a little bit more and the defensive players that you knew either you roomed with them on the road they were your room your regular dorm roommate or again like i said you're in the same recruit class or you're from the same city so that's kind of how it goes and then as we get older 